Hi, welcome back. Uh, welcome to the Cena Show. Happy Thursday. Uh, we had technical difficulties before, so we're back. Thing about Instagram Live is you can't do it from your laptop, and you should be able to do it from your laptop, but we're not there yet. 21st century, huh? Hi, Joe. Welcome back. Thank you. I am. Hi. Let's see. Oh, looks good. Look good. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to get us all three <laughs> in, which is why we're trying to do it with the uh, the laps. Uh, I wish yeah. I Instagram so behind with that. They should be doing that already. Can you make us? Uh, Hi. How can we put ourselves there? Uh, you look I good. See. I see you. Here's Miss Where's Dory. Our, Dory. Where's our make queen make of the evening? Here's oh, the story. Dory, look at how cute. Hello. Oh my God, we have a lot of animal lovers on. Hi. Okay. Oh, my well, Dory's God. very happy to be here. Aren't look at her haircut. Yeah. She was just groomed last week. Oh my God. Hi, this Dory. Is Dory the labor dog. Yay. Yay. She's the best mascot ever. Hi, Mike. Hi. Us, so maybe she can be seen behind us here in the middle. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Dory's okay. the best. It takes direction. Look. <laughs> Should give her a biscuit? Well, after you could give her a biscuit. <laughs> How are you, Mike? Hi, Ellen. Uh, nice to see you. Hi. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, sorry. We've done so many uh, FaceTime and Zoom things on our on the laptop recently that... We actually, it's the first time we did this thing on Instagram, so I didn't, I didn't know that you couldn't do that on Instagram. So you're right, they should make that happen. It's so far behind, right? I mean, especially during this whole thing. So anyway, hello. So anyways, I don't have stock in them, but I should. I don't know if I should yet. Uh, <laughs> good. Happy Thursday. I have the show every Thursday. Yeah. And uh, I thank you for joining. I was saying, um, right on the last broadcast, I was saying, you guys have really been mentors for me in SAG and, and in life as well. But you took me under your wing and helped me be this union butterfly that I am. And you, got, and you guys have been doing it for a long time. But I, when did I meet you? At, I met you 2013 or, or around there, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, right after the merger. And so we were SAG after. Yes. And, uh, and I have to say about you, Christina, is that, I mean, I think I put on a comment, you know, on, under the word effervescent in the dictionary is Christina's picture oh. so, of, of life and love and uh, positive energy. And uh, so, you know, you just started showing up for and volunteering and being a, a fabulous presence. And so um, we were thrilled to have you put on our MOVE committee, members organizing volunteer efforts and and we love you and continue to love you. So I love you guys so much. I feel like I was just at your house. Isn't that ironic? I was just over there. And then this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, let's get off of that. Topic. Okay. I like to jump back to the past before we go ahead. And when you were young, young folks, how did you know you Way were going to be back in the, in the dark ages? Yes. <laughs> it's all perspective, you know. <laughs> uh, how did you guys know you were you wanted to be activists and and artists performers? Well, I think artists came first. I don't think at three years old I was really thinking much about being an activist. Um, uh, I can talk about me first, because um, why not? Um, but um, I, I saw ballet dancers on TV and I said, I want to do this and that. And my mom said, well, okay. And so I got ballet lessons, you know, and th that, I loved that. And then um, that kind of led to me enjoying acting. And then as I got older and realized my legs were not, were little short goat legs, it was not really other than doing musicals, it didn't make sense to be a ballet dancer. And I loved acting. And uh, I, I have to interrupt. Dory needs to go outside. I'll be right back. Okay, okay Mike, save your story. We'll hear it's you like, in a few. You're, you're not playing with my toy, and I have to go outside. <laughs> 
So, I mean, it, you know, she who must be obeyed. So, um, she is queen. <laughs> at any rate, uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I was one of the odd children who just, I just wanted to do it. And um, I love the arts. I love uh, dancing and singing and acting and um you still remain odd and you're taking up the whole thank couch. you okay well <laughs> there you go okay take it away michael no 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 go 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 finish well no i mean that's how i started because i just loved it and i think a lot of people take some time to decide what they want to do with their lives and for whatever reason um even before i realized it i remember when I was in second grade, I moved to Illinois, but I was talking to someone that I was growing up with in Ohio before second grade who said, oh, I remember you used to go, okay, here's a sad face. Okay, here's a <laughs> It's just such an odd thing for a child to do, but apparently I did it. I have no memory of that, but apparently um, I, as you say, continue to be odd and it's just what I love doing. So you have to, in this business, because it is a business besides an art form. If you do it as your life, you have to love it because otherwise it's, it's a crazy way to make a living. It remains a crazy way to make a living, but you love it enough, you wouldn't do anything else. I was actually just talking about this this morning. I went in for a nuclear stress test uh, with my cardiologist and one of the technicians who injected me with uh, nuclear stuff <laughs> at one point said so you're an actor yeah so what have you been in blah blah and why did you do this why do you do this and i said well when i was uh born i was born with a uh cleft lip and cleft palate and in order for me to have some confidence because that is something as a little kid and even uh, adults uh, back in the day, maybe and still today, uh, they make fun of you. And uh, you start getting, you know, this sort of inferiority. And so my mother, in order to uh, uh, co counter that, got me involved in uh, uh, dance school. Uh, Miss Cosette's uh, School for Ballet, Tap, and Acrobatics. And we would, uh, like twice a year, we would do like a little uh, concert, a little presentation, either at the St. Michael's Parish Hall in St. Louis or on the USS Admiral, wow. uh, a, a ship, uh, a boat that went up and down the Mississippi River <laughs> once in the day and once at night. And we would get on there in the daytime on the big ballroom floor and we would do our little, you know, numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as I've I went, seen the pictures too. <laughs> as I as I as I, as I went through uh, grade school, high school, college, uh, when I wasn't doing uh, some sort of sport, football, soccer, wrestling, basketball, whatever, I was doing uh, alternately uh, theater, and uh, uh, decided that that probably wasn't going to be profitable and uh, decided I was getting hurt too much in sports. And so I started teaching speech and drama, high school, college. And at one point I started missing performing. And so I got involved in a community theater. And soon after that, uh, my professional career started. And uh, that was in like 1969, which turns out to be the same year both of us got our uh, equity, uh, our actor's equity card. Nice. Uh, Ellen, was, Ellen was doing uh, the, uh, the Tribal Rock Love Musical Hair. Okay. And I was working at, the, at Webster College, teaching in the theater conservatory and acting in the professional company, uh, which was then known as the Loretto Hilton Repertory Theater. Uh, which meant that they got a lot of calls for people wanting to book hotel reservations because the uh, sisters of Loretto uh, were, were the, the uh, teachers for Conrad Hilton. And so at one point when they wanted to get a donation and build a library, they called up Conrad Hilton and said, hey, fork over some money. And he went, for what? They said, a library. She said, nah, that's debt come up with something else. And they went, uh, theater. And he went, okay. And so uh, 
that was in like 1967 or something. And then I ended up joining the company in 69. And you might want to know, I left after four years, but in a couple of years after Ellen graduated from Carnegie Mellon University, her first professional job as a teacher and an actor was also at the uh, Webster College. And she was also a member of the uh, LaRota Hilton Repertory Theater, which is now the Repertory <laughs> Theater of St. Louis, period. There we go. <laughs> nice. That's it. That's it. That's, it. that's, I, it. that's the that's, end of the story. That's, <laughs> that's my life. That's my life. Yeah, and, and one. <laughs> well, it sounds uh, very inspiring. Have you, have you guys been visited there in a while? Or? Have we what? Been back there. Not much. No. Oh, no. 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 I haven't been there. Uh, I moved to D.C. for a few years. And uh, then when I came back to the Midwest, settled in Chicago, like 1975. And I went down and did a couple of plays. That's when Ellen was actually uh, in the company and teaching. But we met before that, but that's another story. We met before that in Washington, D.C., but that's another story. Uh, well, what, how, where did you meet? That's my most my okay. favorite well, for, story. First, I think I need to clarify something, uh, which, because he threw it in. Uh, yeah, I was supposed to, right out of high school, I was supposed to have the first theater scholarship at Illinois State University. I went to their university high school in normal Illinois, and... Uh, I was all set to go to college and went to see what they used to call them cattle calls when you have like, I lined up with 3,500 people to get an appointment to be seen for the original Chicago Company of Hair. I had no expectation that I would be called back. What I fully expected was to be lined up and gone, you, 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 bye. And that's what I kind of expected, but I thought that would be an interesting experience. So now I have to bring the dog in. I'll be right back. I am. Uh... So, so anyway, I, um, <laughs> so I went up with my friends. We drove the two hours to Chicago from Bloomington Normal. And uh, all we got the first time was an appointment. And then we drove another time up the two hours. And then I kept getting called back, which, you know, I was in high school. I mean, I think politically, probably I was uh, more aligned with uh, that sort of uh, point of view, but lifestyle-wise. She was I, a communist. No, I was not a communist. Stop. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I, I mean, no, I just, I, you know, I had some similar views to some of those. Let me say that. But as far as lifestyle, you couldn't have been further away. I was like little Bambi, you know. Uh, but weirdly, uh, they wound up casting me. And so I decided having my first job be at the Schubert Theater in Chicago was kind of a nice thing, my first equity job. And so I joined the union back then, right out of high school. Um, that, I, I, I did that show, I decided to be a backpacking teenager in Europe for a little while. So I quit after a year just to do that. I came back, I went on the national tour. I had a great time. I auditioned for Carnegie Mellon because I thought it'd be nice maybe to go to a, a BFA school and uh, maybe be somewhere besides where I grew up. Uh, I realize now uh, I would have actually been in school with all of the Steppenwolf people. So I uh, sometimes like to say who knows who I would have been divorced from by now, but you know, it's a great, brilliant group of actors, but they, I also was with a great, brilliant group of actors at Carnegie Mellon. And uh, so I went to school there, but then I w it was a little weird because I was going to school, but working professionally to earn money for the next year. Uh, my father had passed away right before my freshman year, uh, unexpectedly at 52, age of 52. And um, so anyway, I went on the, so between my freshman and sophomore year, at the end of my freshman year, they called up and said, hey, uh, do you want to come back in the national tour because your replacement is leaving? And I said, well, it's funny timing because in a few weeks I'm going to be done with finals and I don't know if I'll be called back at that time they were doing major cuts between your years they do it differently now and who know who knew who was going to still be in the sophomore class and so I said if you can put my understudy on I'll, I'll. so I, I got this incredible you know summer vacation between freshman and sophomore year I know I was lucky I mean we were playing you know LA San Francisco Hawaii Alaska it was like a dream tour um 
But then I went back for my sophomore year. Then every time in between my years, I was working as a professional actor to earn money to learn more about being a professional actor, which was actually quite interesting because sometimes the things you would think, oh, that's going to be the really important thing, was like the things that you thought, oh, you know, a technical class where you go one, two, buckle my shoe, whatever, you'd realize, oh, you would be cleaning up your performance and being more um, technically proficient at things that really helped get out of the way and closer to what you wanted to to uh, project because you were learning those technical things. It became a tool that I could use to let what I wanted to shine through, shine through. But anyway, it was uh, great. And yes, he's quite right. After I graduated, my first uh, job af after college was um, in St. Louis at the Repertory Theater, um, well, Loretto Hilton Repertory. <laughs> and also I taught speech and, and voice in the conservatory at the same time. And as a sidebar, uh, Ellen and I both got our cards. Uh, I'm obviously older than she is uh, by nine, several years. Nine years. And, uh, <laughs> but as it turns out, our paths had crossed a lot earlier. I was teaching high school in Illinois at Western Illinois University Lab School, K through 12. And I was in charge of the uh, speech and drama uh, extracurricular programs. And so we would take students, you know, to various places around uh, the state of Illinois. And we would compete against other students who were in high school around Illinois. And as it turns out, we finally figured out after we were together for a few years that we were actually in the same place at the same time and my students were competing against Ellen while she was in high school. Ta-da! And when uh, we both were visiting yeah. my, um, my wonderful drama high school teacher, uh, Mr. Lawrence Connolly and his lovely wife, Madi, who just left this world last week, um, uh, we were, um, he gave me, they were downsizing into a, um, from the, a full house into more of a, a, you know, a smaller place. And he said, would you like to have this scrapbook from those years? Um, and I said, sure. Cause he was actually only at my high school for five years, but four of those years were mine. And we had all these people, for example, in this production of Carousel that went on, Leslie Mandarin, who was Julie, went on for a, have a, a beautiful opera career in Europe where she, you know, originated a Minotti opera as a coloratura of the violinist and, and all these other people uh, that just went into the arts from that time. Um, and so I had this wonderful scrapbook I was able to show, share with my friends whenever I get to see them. But in that scrapbook were several programs where both of our names were, uh, me as a student competing and Michael as a, as a coach or a judge. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of, we have proof. We actually have proof. But we did keep running into each other. Um, we said we had first met in... Uh, Her students. She, she always beat my students, as it turned out. That's true. But anyway... Of uh, course she did. <laughs> but, um, but we did meet in Washington, D.C. at Arena Stage in between my junior and senior year, Charlie Hayde, who you may remember from Hill Street Blues and other things, who mostly directs now. But... Um, he came back to Carnegie Mellon, his uh, where he was an alum and and directed a show. I was in a different show. Uh, I was doing the the Brecht show, and he was doing House of Blue Leaves. But at any rate, he auditioned some of us because he had a couple of uh, roles in this musical version of Horatio. Um, he was doing it Arena Stage, a wonderful theater in uh, Washington D.C. And two of us, he. Um, he hired and uh, I went down there and I was understaying the lead. And at that time, Michael was dating someone who was um, understudying the second lead and she and I got to be friends. So I really only knew him peripherally. I didn't know him that well. Um, I knew him kind of like the guy that, you know, you go to dinner and he thinks, oh, here's my girlfriend's odd friend. But again, odd, um, which he did think, I think at that time. And, um, but I didn't know him that well. Um, then I lost track of, of, of them, her, really. Uh, and I found out that she had gone to New York, he had gone to Chicago, I found out later. But we did run into each other in St. Louis. 
then we ran into each other in Kansas City. So all these regional theater jobs, we went through, as I like to say, every possible friendship until there was nothing left to do but get married. So scene. That's Aww. it. And now you're both on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, it's it been... takes. It's an odd couple. It takes. We a are while. exactly over. Well, how many years of marriage is? We we've, we've been hanging around each other in that way for forty over forty years, right? So, married Somewhat. for eighty two. Eighty two. What's to oh thirty eight two thirty eight years. Someone in the comments say, someone says, I always saw you guys met during ER. Someone's uh, ER fan page tribute said that. Ah, nice. Hello, ER. Uh, fan page tributes. I think I'm. I think I'm a member of. That. I was. I was um, proud. I was proud to be a. a, a, a my, I, I was the cause of a drinking game on ER. Yes. And what it had to do with was I at the time, I was like the only sort of cop character who had actually something to say and do, and the drinking game I think was, every time the cop with the mustache shows up. You have to take a drink. So that's, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I, actually, the the we didn't meet that way. What had happened was that uh, we knew John Wells, the producer, and um, and also the the casting director. Uh, John knew us as well, um, and they knew us kind of as a couple. And their original idea was there was like a frequent flyer couple that, uh, meaning they came to the ER a lot. And he was a cop uh, and, she, and she was his wife. And what happened is that Michael was cast as uh, the, the, plot, the, the, the story was that those two characters, the wife accidentally shot the cop. Yeah. And so when there was time to audition or they offered me the job, I was in Hawaii doing a pilot for Donald Belisario uh, and in Maui, and Ellen uh, ended up going in and getting cast instead of that woman. I, yeah, I said, I said, is it okay if I read for Lydia? And they said, oh, what a good idea. And I kind of knew by the time I left it, they kind of ran out to the uh, parking lot and said, I think you're going to hear something very soon. And at that time, it was Lydia Woodward, because it was named after a friend of, of John Wells. And then... Um, what happened is that they, she was brought on as a producer, so they changed it to right. So that's how that happened. And then the pilot that I was doing failed miserably. <laughs> and uh, I came back and at one point they decided, whoa, uh, under normal circumstances, there's always a cop nurse relationship going on around the ER or a hospital or a fireman nurse, you know, whatever. And so they said, hey, you want this job? I went, sure. They essentially created it for me. I didn't know anything about it until it happened, which was really, really fun. So I ended up doing, I think, what, a couple of years, 12 episodes. And, uh, and then and uh, we got married on the show, which is also, I think people think is why we actually were married in 1982 in real life. But I had, I had a much bigger dress on ER. It was much <laughs> Cinderella-ish, <laughs> uh, which I referred to. I love that in the scene where... Because obviously, if you had been following it in the early years, Lydia had been married more than one time. It was clear that she had been through some not so good relationships. So when she's returning her wedding dress because he keeps not getting married, he keeps talking about it, but nothing's happening. And, and she talks, there, she's going to return the wedding dress, which is why she has it. And she calls it her fake virgin outfit, which I always <laughs> loved. Uh, but yeah, so we got married uh, on the show. And then I disappeared after a couple of more episodes. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I just disappeared. Yeah. Well, really? It was fun. No explanation. Wow. Mysterious I got, I got, man, Mike. <laughs> I, got, I got promoted or I got uh, sent off to another uh, district or whatever. But. Yeah, you got promoted. I like that. It was funny though when we were doing the uh, our pilots at the same time. ER was took two months because it was a two-hour pilot originally, actually a, a a script by Michael Crichton for a film, 
And uh, Michael is shooting in Maui, and I was shooting in the basement of Linda Vista Hospital in uh, in uh, uh, Boyle Heights. And um, <laughs> it was, I it, my character is written so that I had the end of my one shift and then some downtime, and then you saw me at the beginning of my next shift and then through to the end. So I had a couple of weeks off, and I went to visit him in Maui because he was in his really nice hotel room and that's always a nice way to see Hawaii when somebody else is paying for it and um and we had a great time and I no I only turn beige even in Hawaii I'm like one of those one of those girls who doesn't do a lot of tanning but uh, yeah, I too. did know when I came back they had been in the basement all that time filming and I came back and I went oh my god they look like the mole people I mean because they had long hours in a basement every day. And I had bought these uh, chocolate covered um, macadamia nuts, just boxes mm -hmm. and boxes so I could just bring them back for everybody. And, um, and I remember Sherry Stringfield <laughs> said to me later, she said, yeah, I remember you came back and we'd been down there and you came back all happy with the chocolate covered macadamia nuts. And I'm going, we've been in the basement. <laughs> but, <laughs> but obviously it worked out really well for everybody. So good those sound good i love chocolate covered anything really yeah, yeah. and so, but, really done, but you know other than that and, covered anything and hey you got a free trip to hawaii that's what's better than that yeah <laughs> my second because i also tra traveled there with the national tour of hair so i've been very lucky that way yeah you guys are you guys are worldly and have met a lot that's so wild that's a great that's a great love story. It's very, it's very rare, actually, that you hear things like that these days. It seems I like mean, it's meant to happen. I don't know. We kept Fate. running into each other until we stuck or something like that. <laughs> I've, One drunken see? night in Kansas City. Oh, shut yeah. up. Uh-oh. <laughs> Too I many think only pretended to be drunk that night. So <laughs> We'd have, we could have a good excuse if it didn't work out. <laughs> too much TMI, TMI. 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 <laughs> so uh, let's shift to the activism side of things and we'll go back to film and TV so you because I you when I met you you introduced me to move LA which is members organizing volunteer efforts mm -hmm. and I and I was with you for a long time and I love that committee at sag -Aftra. So how did you come about that? And what do you guys do? What do we do? Okay, well, um, actually, M MOVE, uh, you remember, um, uh, MOVE was originally back, started back in 2000, I think, and I was not on the board or anything, but it was, uh, when the commercial strike happened, there was a, a commercials, uh, basically, in, uh, organizing the members for it for strike actions and it was called members on the move and michael and i showed up enough that we got a little joke award that was for the couples award for showing up together uh and uh we were involved in that um i was not on the board or anything um i think that before that though my labor activism well he comes from a labor background I didn't, uh, I'll have you go into that in a second, but um, when I was doing ER, uh, I, we had, especially in the beginning, a great relationship with the Emergency Nurses Association. And um, I uh, spent a lot of time getting to those, those people and, and understanding nurses and, and uh, nursing unions and what they were fighting for their patients and, and patient ratios. and. And I was invited, Juliana Margulies and I were invited to go to the ENA Scientific Assembly that first year, and we both went together, and then Juliana became busy, and I, they then invited me, started inviting me to go to critical care nurses, and uh, um, my friend Connie Rue Brazelton and I went and, and spoke, uh, the American Nurses uh, Association, along with, oh my gosh, we thought like the after dinner minute, it was a uh, Coretta Scott King was speaking, and uh, and Mrs. Brady was speaking about gun uh, violence, and 
Sarah Brady and, and I was like, well, we the, the after dinner mix because it was like amazing um, company. But uh, we spoke at that time about how we relied on real nurses uh, to, to help us with our stories. And uh, that, uh, that was great. And then it just left, it led to me being invited different places for about a period of three years, speaking to nurses all over, which also leads you to understand um, their efforts in the labor movement to, uh, and mostly it was, it was, it was always about patient care, about improving patient care. And I think people think, oh, they just want more money. You know, it, it's, it's always about patient care with them. And I, I was so moved by that. And I was asked by, um, well, at that time, the Screen Actors Guild uh, before merger, if I would come and, uh, and show up at some nurses rallies in town here in LA, which I did. And the more I learned about it, the more I realized how important it was not only for the workers, but for the, the people that the workers are doing work for, that it's just to create a better life for everyone, for all working families. And so I became really um, taken with that. So when I was elected to the, the board uh, in 2009, I believe it was, uh, when Ken Howard uh, was elected as national president, um, I I wound up, I guess, because of my interest in MOVE through a, a strange set of flukes, I wound up being chair of that committee. And I loved it and I wanted to get it more involved in um, education for the members, uh, community services, and uh, more connection with the greater labor movement. And so that's what we started doing. And I assembled wonderful people like yourself to, uh, that really wanted to put in the time and the energy. And uh, it's a good time. It's very gratifying. Now he comes from a labor background. And uh, I really didn't get involved in the activism uh, until 2000 when we had the uh, commercial strike. But even then it was uh, only passing. And what got me really involved was uh, sort of following in uh, Ellen's footsteps and uh, Oh well, no, that was no, no, that was it. I mean, because because my my my, my mother and father, uh, my father was a, a, a business agent and organizer for a small uh, union out of Boston that had a a local in St. Louis where I'm from, and St. Louis at the time had a big shoe industry, and so he was uh, one of my unions, my first union actually the Boot and Shoe Workers of America. And then my mother, uh, who worked for McDonnell Douglas, uh, also a strong union uh, uh, member. Uh, at that time, her, her action had to do more with on the job because there was the, as there is today, but even more so that blatant discrimination against women. And there would be a job posting and my mother would say, uh, I can do that job. And they'd say, oh, no, 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 that's a man's job. And she'd go, I can do it. I'll take the test and I'll show you. And so she took the test and she scored the highest. So they had to give her the job because the union <laughs> backed her. And then she would say, oh, by the way, you're not paying me the same as you're paying the man who's also doing that job. And they go, oh, well, you know, he's got a family to support. And my mother was like, oh, yeah. And so she got the union involved and they went, no, you have to pay her the same thing. And she, also, she, also, she also was involved in uh, a little sexual harassment at the time, you know, and slugged uh, some guy with a pair <laughs> of pliers. And the union said, uh, we back her. You know, the asshole was an asshole. She was so, 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 so there, there, there was that kind of, for me, in my background, there was that, you know, just, just waiting to be let out of the gate kind of thing. Give me something that I can believe in and go out on the streets and, you know, wave a sign. Period. What a great woman. And yes. a father. But wow, yeah. Yeah. you don't yeah. hear stories like that about women either. And that's, uh, and, and, uh, the union backing her all the way, that's, that's yeah. a good union too. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, that's been a struggle too, because some unions, 
it took a while for them to back uh, their women and to allow women in and all of that. So that's changed, I'm happy to say. Now we have a lot of fantastic uh, labor leaders that are women. I actually see ER fan page tribute talking about Connie Marie, because I mentioned Connie Marie Brazelton. I want to tell everybody that, you know, Yvette Freeman and Connie Marie and Laura Seron and, and Getty Watanabe and all of, all of us are still, Abe hey, Ben Ruby I ran into when post-production house a few weeks ago, you know, we are still in touch. Um, uh, Noah Wiley keeps wanting to get together and I, we keep trying to make that happen, but I just want to, uh, and of course, Lily Marie, who's directing a lot now, uh, was on a panel of Mind for Move uh, uh, that we did about, um, about uh, making sure you don't end up on a cutting room floor. So she was there as a, as both a director actor point of view, but I, I just want to assure you that uh, we all do stay in touch and we're still really friends. And if nothing else happened, of course, everything was wonderful about being able to be on that show, but to make friends that are lasting friendships like that have, has been really super important to all of us. He's, uh, they also said, yeah, even Laura there has, Laura there been to so many that support and it's really amazing. Right, right. So, uh, so yeah, that's cool. I mean, ER, my sister said she's seen every episode. It's a huge, huge following. Um, uh, Dory, How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> oh, don't, I just, no, this is your show. I have many questions for you guys. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> I'm working a lot and it's, it's keeping me busy and I'm saving up to buy a car and then I'll come out there and uh, park outside and live outside your house. Now, <laughs> I'll see, you know, I'm going to, I'm actually getting a ticket to LA soon. So I will see you soon. But in, in the meantime, Dory, is, is she behind you still? What's she up to? No, she, hey, she's over on her bed. Okay. So we'll wait till towards the end. You could bring her back. Yeah. Um, she, and but she, she is very, she's always a big hit, as I think you're going to say in the labor. Yes. Day. Yes. So she you have every float. year. Right. Her float is garden wagon with union strong <laughs> signs on it. She's, and, uh, she sits up there like on her little perch and is a, she is a big hit. So oh, I wish I had the picture of her. I'm going to try to get it up. I do uh, have a picture. I could maybe, mm, let's see. I'll, I'll, I'm going to try to get It's on your Facebook, probably. It probably is. is. Let's see. I, I know I, uh, I use Well, the... I have this picture. This is a good picture. I'll just show this one. Dory and everybody, look Dory. at us. Dory and everybody, yeah. Dory, <laughs> she's the <Yeah>. cutest. <laughs> and the Along labor. Michelle labor. and Stella with her puppets, they're both really huge, huge fans. Uh, oh. I mean, had huge fans at the Labor Day Parade. Yeah, because the puppets ride in the wagon, too. Yes. What was the blue? What was Shelly blue? Shelly blue. Shelly blue. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Michelle's cool. Um, Michelle and her puppet pals. <laughs> uh, has she, have you guys, did you guys go to the last? You go to every year, right? Yeah, except for this year, it doesn't look like we'll be doing it. But we do go every year other than that. And For, uh, for many years, right? Yeah, I... I would send you that picture, which I know I have on my, uh, oh wait, maybe I can send it from my uh, laptop. Or will that- You could text it, laptop? yeah. You could, oh, if you text it, I could get it on my laptop too. Yeah, but if I text it, I prob I may lose you on Instagram and that would be not so good. That's okay, we'll see her in a little bit. Well, she, yeah, she's yeah. getting her beauty. I'll send it to anyway. you after the show and you can post it on your site or something. <laughs> okay, that's- A uh, picture of her in your <laughs> way. <laughs> So, um, so cute. anyway, you had another right. question. We keep talking. Sorry. I have a thousand questions. However, so the labor, so the labor parade you guys do yearly and then the home walk, I forgot to put that on, on my yeah. breakdown, but you do the home walk, which is homeless heroes every year as well. Yeah. It's the United way home walk, which again was uh, this year because of obvious reasons we could not have as planned in May. Uh, it used to be in November, which I kind of liked because it kind of balanced out with the when the uh, mail carriers ha carriers have their come to your house and pick up the groceries that you have left at your mailbox. That was is done in May as well, and it used to be great because we'd have homeless heroes uh, uh, the home walk in November, and we'd have 
launch the uh, food drive in May. But last year they were both in the same month, but we survived it. And uh, we help, would help them in the uh, mail carriers thing, unload the, the wagons and then separate the food and throw out the old food and all that stuff. But the Home Walk, uh, United, United Way, uh, all of the unions, the LA County uh, Federation of Labor, all the unions uh, from the LA County get together and we are the homeless heroes team and all of the money that we raise goes to uh, homeless veterans. Um, there's a lot of money raised for everybody um, by the home walk, which is great, but we did want to make sure we took care of our homeless veterans. So uh, because as I've often said, one of the largest growing, if not the largest growing uh, segment of homeless is uh, homeless female veterans with children, sadly. And um, I know you can relate to that being in the military yourself, Miss Christina. Yes, um, God bless. And, uh, so yeah, we would always, and we, do you remember, were you at the, we had a pizza party because we brought the most volunteers to the home walk and, you know, so, and um, I'm very proud of, if you go to Labor Community Services, which is the community services page of the LA County Federation of Labor, you'll see a picture of our MOVE volunteers uh, uh, separating food at the food drive. Uh, we're like on their landing page. I don't know if you know that. Oh, I didn't know so, that. Yeah, yeah. so go to um, LA, LA Community Services website yeah. and you will see our picture there. Wow. So, so we, we've really enjoyed that. It's just been very odd this year not being able to do. Um, we're in that, we're in that uh, age group where we're supposed to do everybody a favor and stay home, <laughs> which has been is a really weird thing if you're used to being out on the streets volunteering. So um, anyway. Well, unfortunately, will... unfortunately for unions, we're able to sort of, for the most part, shelter in place. Yes. But they That's have fed bittersweet. of thousands of people, the LA County Federation of Labor. Uh, they've, they've really done a great job. And I also just recently, uh, I've served since, well, it's, it's since um, 2016. What happened was that Gabrielle Carteris, who was executive vice president at that time of sag -Aftra, was serving on the, um, on the State Federation of Labor, the California Labor Federation for sag -Aftra. and then when uh, Ken Howard uh, unfortunately passed away and she became president, she went on to be on the national and asked me because of all my work, because I had kind of devoted all my work to labor and organizing, um, she asked me if I would uh, take over for on the California Labor Federation, which I have been doing since 2016. And we just had our uh, biennial convention virtually this year instead of in San Francisco. But we have been able to, like, for example, this year, we were able to pass a resolution about reminding our, our union uh, brothers and sisters and other unions that we are like, just like we have to learn how to use union printers and look for the union label and uh, in our clothes and uh, drink responsibly, drink union beer. Um, then they need to learn that we are also a union product and, and to, especially when they're doing political commercials and things like that, please use union people. And this year I had to explain to them that a lot of, of our members have professional home studios so they, they can actually shelter in place and still provide uh, union voiceovers. But then we were able also to, in the policy statements, include um, uh, statements uh, by our journalists, by our broadcasters, um, uh, on a free press, the importance of a free press, and also uh, a statement about the protection of journalists and how that's really important for a democratic society. So we got, this was la last week, last week, and uh, so we, we had a substantive uh, time there strange as it was to have it via Zoom, but um, so we continue to do our work even though we're at home doing it over Zoom. Um, I, don't, I don't think, you, <laughs> I, I know, right, we just came from that. I don't think you said it, but congratulations on being reelected, right, as uh, vice you. president representing sag -Aftra. Thank you. And that's for the California Labor Federation Executive Council. Yes. You're a boss, Alan. You're a boss. Well, it, 
what it is, it's very heartening uh, because anybody in, uh, if you ever go to any sort of labor rallies or labor meetings, the passion and the heart uh, and the compassion, I think, are really palpable, that people are really there to make the world a better place. And every time I leave there, I feel better about the world, frankly, because I know those people really care uh, about social and economic justice. And I know I'm sounding like a, I'm on my little you know, soapbox, but it, it, it really is one of the things that gives me a lot of hope about the world when I see all ages, all kinds of people from all walks of life coming together just to make the world a better place. It's, it's a good thing. There was a stretch when uh, unions, their main focus was, you know, sort of me, 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 me. And I think what's happened in the last, even before this latest White House debacle, unions have started realizing that the reason they were formed in the first place was because of social justice. And I think what's happened is that those people that are now in power in the various unions around the country, especially like SEIU, the biggest you know labor union in the country now. I mean, these these the the focus is not only wages, but it's also all of the other you know social problems that you know are plaguing people. Uh, you know, they don't have people working in uh, a McDonald's. But what they do is that they go around and they go, you should pay these people $15 an hour. And we're going to stand out here on the street in front of your McDonald's. And we're going to let you know, these aren't our people, but they are our people. And I think that's, that's, that's a lot of what Ellen is speaking to, mm-hmm. that, that unions have come back into where they were in the beginning, fighting for everybody, mm-hmm. health care you know, whatever. Yeah, it was great. One of the great times he's talking about when we, we went from, a, it was the fight for 15 is what it was called. We were, we were going from one fast food uh, place to the other, but they had a team of lawyers and they had pre-planned that people could walk out and they had the protection, legal protection to do so without being having uh, anybody turn on them just to make the point. So they had, they had, even though these are not union members, they needed that kind of support. It's the same way, and before it was with farm workers and uh, janitors for justice and uh, the washeras from the um, car washes that, that, as he said, they've stepped out for just workers. Um, and uh, everybody's remembered what it means to work together as human beings. It's a good thing. <laughs> That's a great thing, SAG yeah. After, SAG, SAG after recently, in the last couple of years, uh, th- th- we've been trying to get a contract with the SBS, Spanish Broadcasting System. And si se puede. When, yeah. Si se puede. And when, when the workers first decided they wanted to organize and get SAG after as their union, they got fired. And so SAG after took the case and ran it all the way up the flagpole and got them rehired. We're still in negotiations with them after three years because they're dragging their feet. But at least we got those people that were fired because they were trying to organize rehired. With back pay. With back pay. Thank you very much. That's awesome. I know I love sag just so much. <laughs> That's my true love. They're good people. And we, we are, and we, guess, all of us. So. We are. Yeah, look, uh, look at me. I'm going to start getting emotional. So um, what are some Dory. currents? Oh, my gosh, Dory. Hi, Dory. Hi, kitty girl. Oh, my God. She's like, where? Hi, Dory. Hi. Is she wearing a sweater? What's she- She's got a scarf. She's got a pretty little <sighs> butterfly scarf on. She's not really a bow kind of girl. She's more of a, a, a more of a 
kerchief kind of gal. So, so, so we don't put bows on her. We just put a little kerchief on her. And her little, um, what is that, that chew toy she has? The, um, that, that puppet. What is that puppet called? Oh, lamb chop. Lamb chop. She has like five lamb chops. <laughs> she does, well, actually, and that was one of my, uh, Sherry Lewis's master puppeteer was a childhood friend of mine, Pat Brimer, who also recently left us. But he was the one who was rebuilding her puppets and was her master puppeteer. So the first time he came over for dinner and saw that Lamb Chop, because we had had a gift of Lamb Chop as a dog toy. And he was a little horrified. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, Lamb Chop is a dog toy? But anyway, yeah, she was, what when dog? she lies down with them, it's like kind of hard to see where, because she has multiple ones, where she starts, <laughs> they begin, but. So cute. That's a, yeah. it's a popular dog toy. I know other people who have that one. Yeah. So what are some of your current projects you guys are working on? Projects we're working on now? Mm -hmm. uh, Nothing. Well, you, you've had auditions that you haven't heard about yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been so you're that's work. Yeah. Ugh, in yeah. itself. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm, you know, we're auditioning for some voiceover. I've actually even had some uh, on-camera commercial auditions, weirdly, that you self-tape at home with your various props like a hose or <laughs> a lawn chair and a, it's just, it's odd, but it is what it is now. Uh, I, I'm really fortunate to have two commercials running right now uh, on national commercials. Um, Prolia re renegotiated, yay. And uh, Sam Adams, uh, Union Beer, by the way, Union Made Beer, Sam Adams, uh, is another commercial on, in the wedding commercial of that. And uh, been doing some um, English dubbing for Netflix, which I've been doing for a while. And I've been able to do that both from home and there is one post-production house that's been approved by sag After where it's safe enough, uh, safety protocols are strong enough that I could go in and work there. So. So awesome. there's that. And then Boomers, which I, I think you may be called while we were having our Instagram problems. I think you may be, uh, might have posted some of that. But, I haven't uh, yet, but I would like to, if you don't mind. No, that's fine. It's, uh, we've done two seasons with some friends of a, a very silly, but I think fun uh, web series called Boomers, obviously about baby boomers. <laughs> and uh, Dory's in it. Dory is a star. She, in fact, for the before the second season as a fundraiser, they had a name name Dory's character contest. So she, the so Charo won. So, but it's, it's the only time she has costumes because she doesn't really wear clothes. We don't really put clothes on her unless it's really raining hard and we put a raincoat on her. But um, but as Charo, she has dresses. <laughs> she, she tolerates it and she can take direction. And she's very quiet on a set. So she's, she's, she's been backstage in theaters and on sets. And she's a very good girl, aren't you? And she just has always been like that. She's a little Look rescued. Her. She adopted. She's such she a adapted, good listener. She adapted immediately. She, you know. Yeah, we would, we would leave her in the dressing room at, uh, at Curtain and uh, go out on stage and, uh, you know, come back whenever we, you know, we're off stage. And she was Good very chill about the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> she also would sit through rehearsal and uh, not, you know, bark because she knew it was like, okay, this is my time to lay here uh, out in the audience while those people did whatever they were doing. <laughs> and she had enough pets and enough treats and enough water. She just sort of hung out and went, yeah, okay, this is, this is uh, my life. I'm a road dog. I'm a union dog. I'm a, I'm a whatever dog. Look at how well she listens. She's just listening to you and taking it all in too. Yeah, She's yeah, so perfect. Yeah, yeah, Look yeah. at. Yeah. yeah. yeah Congratulations a on a, a beautiful uh, young lady, Leah. Oh <laughs> my God. She says, "Of course." <laughs> Thank you. Right on cue. Yeah, really. Oh. Good so. girl, Dory. So I, I'm going to play the Boomers trailer quick, if that's cool. You're great. Boomers, the web series. You can go to and. Yeah. This is this. This is a. Uh... Let me know if you hear it. Okay. One, two, three. 
Debuted on the 4th of July this year because the first episode takes place on the 4th of July. That's why I was dressed in red, white, and blue. Nice. Um, so. That's and awesome. Dory Congrats. She began the season, so she makes an appearance. Season, and there's a season three coming, right? Or is that. We don't know. We don't yet. know yet. But if people, enough people like it, there will be a season three. So look up Boomers the Web Series and you can. Uh, find that on Facebook and see where to find us uh, on uh, YouTube. Well, I, I'm for free. I think I'm for free. For free, right? And the the season two was brought back because people liked it. So hey, keep it moving, you know. So so you can see season one and season two. I mean, they're short little webisodes. It's it doesn't take long to watch all of it, but it's it's a nice <laughs> distraction. It's not uh, during this weird time. Yeah, I got a, I got a, I got a piece of fan mail from uh, Zurich, Switzerland the other day. And uh, the young man asking for my autograph, one of the things he mentioned seeing me in was Boomers. It's like, wow, how about that? They're watching Boomers in Zurich, Switzerland. <laughs> wow. Shay Scullin, so, hi Shay. Shay said people love it. And, yeah. and, and it, uh, it's been winning, you know, some awards. Yes. Really? Around cool. the country in various uh, festivals that focus on, you know, more thing, things that are of shorter duration in terms of running time. That's awesome. Congratulations. See, as, um, yeah, Shay joined us, so he's saying hi over there. Who? Shay! Oh, hi, oh, Shay. <laughs> Shay. Oh, thank they you. They love Page tribute. They're going to promote it. It's, uh, so thank you very much for that. I'm seeing your comment here pop up on my screen. What, what are you, uh, I think we only have a, a little more time. I'll jump to, um, do you guys have a, oh, we only have a minute and a half. So a oh quick God. quote or enlightenment experience as fast as you can do it. Do you, you know, I, I was I was doing a, a, a thing and somebody said just in a sentence, uh, what's your advice? And, and I out of the blue, and I think it's not too bad is pay attention. I think especially when we're, um, we're so used to looking at our devices and not communicating. And even when we're communicating like this to replace in person communication, it's, it's being aware of what's around you of what the other person is saying of what's truly important um, and not getting so wrapped up in other things that you don't really look around you and see what's happening and see uh, what's important, you know. Michael, say something wise. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. Do acts of kindness in the name of someone you love. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. So we have about 10 seconds. So fo so they could follow you on this Instagram account, right? And then anywhere else quick? Yes. And I'll try to get better about 
using my Instagram account because I know I apologize to all the people. Okay, that you got, you got two seconds. With me on Say thank you and good night. I love you guys. Thank you so good much night. for joining. Love you. Love, you. love you. Love you. Miss you. Thank you. Bye, Dory. Bye, guys. Bye, Ellen and Mike. I love you. Bye. <laughs>